Throughout Flint, the community can see many different murals on abandoned buildings. It's all part of the Flint Public Art Project. But recently, one mural, looking at it right there, was defaced. That mural depicts Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha, better known around the Flint area and nationwide as Dr. Mona. She's credited for being the first doctor to discover the high levels of lead in Flint's water supply, helping to bring attention to what would become known as the Flint water crisis. In Michigan Now reporter Chloe Godbold spoke with the artist behind this and has more on how this happened and what's next, Chloe. So that's right, Dave. The artist tells me he found out about the defacing of his mural from posts on social media. He says it's very disappointing to see his tribute piece of artwork to a local Flint hero be destroyed. Somebody try to do right and you want to come do wrong. You know. Leave the good stuff alone. A mural paying tribute to a prominent local pediatrician now destroyed, with red paint splattered over her face. Obviously deeply saddened. Charles Boyke is the artist of the defaced mural, which is on the corner of Stevenson Streets and Flushing Road in Flint, not far from Hurley Medical Center. Boyke says this mural was painted to honor Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha, who helped make the public aware of the Flint's water crisis. She uh, discovered the high elevated lead levels in children when the Flint water Water crisis was going on and I think it's uh, a fitting tribute to the neighborhood especially with its location to Hurley. Boyke says this project took him 40 hours to complete and will be hard to fix because it's a large-scale mural. So it requires kind of a, a scissor lift or a commercial lift to get to the top. There's also all the different colors of paint that kind of need to be assessed as to what's needed. It's on a busy street. They drive here regularly to go to work at Hurley, the person who messaged me and other people. So it was something that brightened up their day or their commute into work. Joe Scapani is the executive director of the Flint Public Art Project. He says over 300 murals have been painted around Flint by artists who are from all over the world. Scapani says this is not the first time an artist's mural has been damaged or destroyed. We found out mostly it's youth, uh, but we've been able to fix them and move on. We've had a couple, couple little problems, but you know, it's not going to stop us. Scapani says when things like this happen, the person responsible is not only hurting the artist, but also the community. We know it's not a permanent solution. We're just trying, we're doing this to try to make people's lives better that live in the neighborhoods um, until those buildings come down. We always work with the neighborhoods to curate the murals specific, their site specific installations. And so having a better, deeper understanding as to kind of what provoked this so that we could hope that it doesn't happen in the future. A Saginaw area man has now pleaded guilty to hate crimes for death threats related to the Black Lives Matter movement. That's according to the U.S. Justice Department. Today, the department announced 61-year-old Kenneth Pylan pleaded guilty to willfully intimidating and attempting to intimidate citizens from engaging in lawful speech and protest in support of Black Lives Matter. Pylon pleaded guilty to calling nine Starbucks stores in Michigan and telling the employees to relay specifically racial threats to Starbucks employees wearing Black Lives Matter t-shirts. The second charge is for Pylon placing a noose inside a vehicle with a handwritten note reading an accessory to be worn with your BLM t-shirt. Happy protesting, unquote. Now, according to the DOJ, Pylon threatened to kill black people using a racial slur to refer to his intended victims. Every time we get in our cars, turn that key, drop it in drive, and hit the road, especially this time of year, the state police have a request. Make sure you're slowing down and paying attention to the roadway. And paying attention to the road this time of year may be even more important than most. Turns out, there are things working against us in winter. Some we can control, others we can. This is the stretch of road where Evie Kellogg, a Leelanau County woman, was hit and killed by a suspected drunk driver Thursday night while walking along the side of the road. But in northern Michigan this time of year, it gets dark, early. And roads like this don't have street lights. It can be hard to see someone, even if they're wearing reflective clothing and holding a flashlight. But as a driver, that's our job. That's when your speed needs to decrease and your head needs to be on a swivel. Just make sure that if you see anything on the shoulder of the road, that you're lowering your speed and going around safely. As drivers, we all deal with the darkness, but state police say too many of us are choosing to take our eyes off the road and onto our phones. They say it takes five seconds to read a text. That's like covering this amount of distance with your eyes closed. 
And it's not just our phones that are to blame. We know that everyone's distracted in one way or the other, whether it be children in the back seat, the radio, the cell phone. We just ask that you pay attention to your driving. But state police say it's another poor driving choice that's topping their concerns right now. Drinking and driving or drug driving, it definitely decreases your reaction time. Drinking slows a driver's reaction time. It takes longer for our bodies to see something on or near the road and take the normal and necessary steps to avoid a tragedy. So in some ways, a slower reaction time due to drinking is the equivalent of driving the same stretch of road much faster. It's harder for us to take in what we're seeing like a pedestrian, process, and then act. If you have anything to drink, just make the right choice and get a designated driver. The state police remind all of us, doing this safely sometimes comes down to simple choices we make that could have a life-changing or life-ending impact if we choose poorly. You know, oftentimes people are seriously hurt in these crashes where speed or alcohol is a factor. Um, this can be avoided and it can save lives.